Um, my name is Chong Pui Tai from the University of Hong Kong, and today my presentation will be on the reconstruction of Tango Media Who. Um, so before I um, talk about my topic, I would like to share some background, which in fact Nathan has, also, has already mentioned a little bit. Um, in Sophon of Hong Kong's phonological reconstruction, which is also used in the um, and Chinese Tango, uh, Tango Chinese dictionary, um, that is a medium wu, which often occur in the in the reconstructed pronunciation of many Tango characters. So, um, for some for so, um, some um, some years ago, I would like to follow the pathway of our um, um, previous um, prominent scholars and try to work on the rhyme box and try to reconstruct the same um, pronunciation but I failed because they haven't mentioned how does this wu come from and they have not explained how this medium wu is reconstructed so it becomes a question so before I um, take into the details on how does this wu reconstructed, I would like to introduce a little bit on how does the um, Tango phonology itself is reconstructed. Basically, it lies on two types of um, materials. One is the external materials, which is compiled by Tango people on the categorization of Tango initials, rhymes, and tones. So it provides a framework for us to know how many categories are there, for example, for the initials, for the rhymes, and for the tones. So there are rhyme books, homophone books, and rhyme tables, etc. etc. In fact, previous scholars have already done a lot of work on these um, materials. So after we get a framework on how many categories are there on the tones, on the initials, like on, the, on, the, on the rhymes, we still don't know what it what it what they exactly are because we don't know the sound value of individual categories. So that's why we have to consult the internal materials, which are the uh, which are the materials that compiled in the time of Tango, and um, um, that the Tango people or other or, or for example Tibetan people, or Chinese people use other writing systems to transliterate the pronunciation of Tango characters. So these materials provide us information on the sound value of um, individual characters. At the same time, if we combine, combine this information together with the framework of uh, already, um, uh, already summarized by the external materials, then we will know the approximate or some more accurate sound value of individual category, ca categories of um, initial and rhymes. There are three major kinds of internal materials. One is the very famous pearl in the palm, Zhang Zhong Zhu. And the second one are the Tango fragments with the Tibetan transliteration. And the third one are Tango transliteration of Sanskrit intonation. Um, among the external materials, one of the most important is the ocean of characters. I don't like to use the Chinese name Wen Hai because, in fact, there's no Chinese name for this book. Yeah, so I just use the trans and, and, and semantic translation. And in this book, Tango characters are first arranged into two volumes according to their tones, which are the level tones and the rising tone. And then in each volume, characters are listed according to their rhymes. So, um, and, and in each rhyme, homophonic characters are grouped together. There are two major versions of the Ocean of Characters. The version A of Ocean of Characters, which we see uh, often nowadays, provide and um, very important information on the fan chie spelling, which means in each homophon homophonic groups, the, the book also provides two Tango characters to, 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 um, to spell the initial and the rhyme of the target Tango character. So this is um, following the fashion of the Chinese rhyme book, and at the same time, we can use it to, um, to know the interconnection between different rhymes and initials, so it is very important. But unfortunately, only the volume of level tone is preserved for this uh, version A. And version B is more completed. They have, it preserved both version uh, volume A, uh, volume for level tones and rising tone, but it is not, um, not a, uh, uh, it, it is not a full volume. 
So it um, so the um, they simply um, delete all the frontier spellings of the characters. But anyway, we can know the homophonic groupings of the um, rising tone. And the important external materials are the homophones, tong yin. Um, in this book, the tangled characters are arranged according to their category of initials, and in each volume, ca characters are listed according to their rhymes, and in each rhyme, homophones the characters are grouped together. There are two major versions, in fact, there are about four to five different versions, but the most important um, versions are version A, which uh, does not distinguish between tones, so they put the um, homophone characters with different tones together. And in version B, they distinguish between tones. And in fact, uh, uh, apart from the distinguishment between the tones, um, version B group the characters, uh, which is more aligned with the original characters. Uh, but uh, version A uh, seems, in many ways, does not align with the original characters. So we, we don't know why they group the characters differently. Is it because of the carelessness or because of dialectal differences? We don't know. So for the, in the homophones, the, there are nine categories of initials. The labials, labials, dental, labials, stops, so, uh, supradental, uh, velas, dental advocates, rental advocates, and then etc. etc. So these are the first, uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth categories in the homophones. And this is very important in our later discussion. Okay. So we go back to the ocean of character. So this is copied from the ocean of characters. Each block represented that this character share the same frontier spelling, which means they have the same um, um, pronunciation. And sometimes the circles separate the homophonic groups, but sometimes it is a it really depends on the practice of the of the of, of the people who compile the Rhyme book. So basically, these are homophonic groups, these are homophonic groups, and these are individual characters which have its own frontier spelling. If we put the information on the category of initials according to homophones back into these characters, that is a, some very interesting pattern. You can see this is category 3. Category three, 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 and then five, and then six, and then six, and then eight, and then nine, and then it goes back to three, six, six, and nine. So, if we use the lower frontier spelling, which means the the lower frontier spelling should share the same um, rhyme with their target characters. So we put it here. And then if we, we connect them together, it will be like this. So this group of homophonic characters use this character as their lower frontier spelling characters. And also this group also use this character for one. And then like this. And obviously this group of characters are sharing the same initial. And this group of characters are sharing another initial. So basically, although it seems like the ocean of characters, they are categorized by rhymes, but in fact, in each rhyme, sometimes there are more than one rhyme. There, for example, in Tong Guan Huan 4.3, in fact, there are two different rhymes. So if we put back the reconstruction of um, Sofunov and Gong Huan Chen together, then we will know how does the medium who come from? It comes from the second rhyme. The second rhyme, for the second rhyme, they add a medium who to set to distinguish it from the first first um, cycle, what I call the first cycle. So the, the medium who is for the second cycle. So our question is whether this medium who is correctly reconstructed and whether it is a universal feature for all um, ex, um, extra cycles inside the rhymes. So nowadays we have the privilege of um, have a very rich data on the Chinese transliteration and also the um, Tibetan transliteration. But of course, when we use the Tibetan and Chinese 
um, transliteration to, 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 uh, for the study of the sound value of each category. We must be very careful. And um, because, for example, for the data from Zhangzhongzhu, the direction of transliteration is very important because if it is um, uh, using a technical character to, to translating, transliterating a Chinese characters, um, which means they, um, <coughs> which means, um, yeah. And this is another way around. The Chinese character is used to use uh, transliterate the technical characters. Of um, we can we can we can ask um, we can propose that um, the the Chinese character which is used to transliterate Tango characters should be closer to the Tango pronunciation rather than the other way around using the Tango character to transliterate the Chinese character. So the direction is important, and for the Tango, uh, for the Tibetan trans transliteration, in fact, um, nowadays we know that the transliteration of um, Tango characters by uh, in Tibetan writing are come from many many different sources, and I myself identify at, at least seven different sources. So we cannot mix different sources together; otherwise, we cannot see the patterns or uh, regularity among them. But anyway, now we enjoy the privilege of having all this data. So if we look at Tong one point four three, and this is the first cycle. And this is the second cycle. It is quite obvious that for the first cycle, many of them using the Chinese character, which what we call in, in Chinese the kai kao zi, the, the open vowels. And even the Tibetan transliteration suggests that there is um, some um, vowel e, something like that. And for the second cycle, it is very obvious that the Chinese transliteration used the he kao zi, the closed vowel, which means the medium wu. Sometimes, if the character itself does not contain a medium wu, they, um, in Zhang Zhongzhu, they add a little tiny character he, which means closed. Then the, the closed mouth run, run, and the, the runness of the pronunciation. And also, if you if you look at the Tibetan transliteration, um, you can see that for all hand A transliteration, that is um, a Wu here, and for hand B, that is a prescript B, which in fact representing the roundness of the syllable. So for at least for this rhyme, it is very very clear that the first one, the first cycle does not contain um, roundness, and um, is not round. And for the second cycle, it is rounded. So in, at this point, Sokhunov and Gong Huangcheng and also for Wosan uh, and that they are correct. But we get another problem. What about the rhymes that have already had a main vowel Wu? So the main vowel is already Wu. How can you add another run, runness upon a medium Wu? So the Gong's proposal is like, okay, so the first cycle, for example, at 1.01, the main cycle is Wu, and the second cycle is Wu. And for 1.05, the main cycle is Wu, and the second cycle is Wu. So what is it? What is Wu and Wu? How can you distinguish Wu from Wu? So, so this is quite problematic, and this is why I'm, I find it so interesting. So in the past few days, I. I hide in my in my room of my, of my hotel to to sort out all the data, um, about um, ten thousand of them, and try to find out some some patterns. Okay, the information is very rich, but sort of um, to my disappointment that I cannot find some obvious, very obvious differences on the phonological features between the first and the second cycle, for example, in Tong 1.01 and also for this kind of part zero, uh, second uh, 2.01. There is no obvious differences between them. But only one point that I find it quite interesting is that if you look at the second cycle of the, this first line, and if, and if you look at the the Chinese character, which is used to to transcribe, to transliterate the Tango characters, 
you can see that many of them are the in Chinese what, what we call the Lu Zi, the entering tone characters. Of course, Wa is not an uh, entering tone, but other of them, all of them are. And also these are entering tones. And this is not, and this is not, but most of them are. So I so but it is quite dangerous because we don't know whether it is um, coincident or whether it representing some some regular pattern. So I also later I um, last night I also look at um, the tone for 1.05 and it seems like it seems like that um, uh, the second cycle for this main vowel wu, for this rhyme with the main vowel wu, um, are often related to the entering tone of Chinese character. So, in fact, I, have, I cannot come up with any solid conclusion right now because it is still um, uh, unable for the investigation. But we can draw up some base, some brief observation. First, in some rhymes, the second cycle consists of a medium wood, which is quite certain. However, it does not explain the phonological features of all the second circles in all rhymes. For rhymes who, which have already consist of a main who, the second cycle seems to be related to some phonological features related to the entering tone of Chinese. But um, the Northwestern, Northwestern Chinese during the time of Tangut, according to many studies, um, the entering tone in, in this dialect has already disappeared. So it may be related, related to some phonological features which is related to the, um, 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 the features which um, 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 remain after the entering tone disappeared. But we don't know what is it. And just before I come here for the presentation, I talked to Professor Arakawa, which is um, a, 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 a scholar I admire very much for his knowledge. So he kindly reminded me that um, Professor Nishida has already mentioned it um, several um, in, in, in a paper that this difference may be related to some um, maybe they, they share the same tone but different tone um, tone value and it seems like they are some they are quite related to my observation and besides um, there are also many many rhymes that um, they don't just have two uh, internal cycles. Some of them have three, four, and, and both have, have, they have five. So what are the differences between, so if we know there are some differences between the first and the second cycles, so what are the differences between the first and the third and the th third and the fourth and the fourth and the fifth? We don't know. In fact, for some rhymes, and. Um, and if they have more than two cycles, they may have had a third cycle. Sometimes we simply don't have enough um, external materials in Chinese or Tibetan to support them to investigate the, how does it similar or different with each other. So basically we don't have enough information. Okay, so my proposal is that Currently, in the Tango Chinese Dictionary, nearly all Tango characters are assigned with a reconstructed pronunciation, which seems to be very nice. Um, in fact, I have, talk, I, I, I have um, talked with my former supervisor, Professor Nia Hong Yin and Sun Bo Jing, on this issue, whether why they have to come up with a pronunciation for every character. And they said because for the scholar who work on the manuscript, they just want every character as a pronunciation. So it looks fine. But it will be very dangerous if we use this information for further reconstruction, say for the um, proto sinotic pattern, because in fact the source of some reconstruction seems to be very, very doubtful. For example, there are some characters, according to my data, and they, these characters does not, um, does not, um, um, does not relate to any constructed categories, they may be what, they, what the book, uh, what the Tango people call the individual um, characters. And then, um, the, it seems like the pronunciation is simply reconstructed based on one or two examples of transliteration without knowing the categorization of this character. And 
furthermore, there are at least a few examples um, in my, on my hand that we only know the initial category, say it is a stock sign, it's a, it's a bilabial sign of the, um, of the initial, uh, which is the um, category of the initial of this character. And then in the dictionary, they simply assign with, uh, with an accurate initial, like um, and bar and the inside, and without any norm. So it would be very doubtful. So if we, in fact, the, this, the, the, the patterns of this rhyme book is very similar to the Chinese rhyme book. So basically we can, to, to, to a very large extent, we can adopt the practices in uh, reconstructing mi middle Chinese pronunciation for Chinese characters, which means we have to make sure that the, the categories of initial, medium, and rhyme of individual Tango characters should be traceable, which means we have to establish a categorization system for the phonological reconstruction for individual characters so that the source of reconstruction can be easily described and traced. Um, and so this is something now I'm working on, um, and, and at least for the part of initial, it's, it's relatively easy, but for the rhymes, especially when it is related to the internal differences, the, the cycles um, inside the rhyme, it, 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 it can be very problematic. But anyway, even if we don't know the exact sound value of some cycles, of some rhymes, it doesn't really matter. The point is that we have to we have to acknowledge to what extent we know about the pronunciation of a character. For characters whose initial medium of rise is unidentifiable, what we should do is, is, to, is to use some symbol to mark that we don't know and we are not clear about that. So the, so the reconstructed pronunciation should truthfully reflect what we know and what we don't know. And this is my proposal. Okay, so in fact, um, I don't have much new discovery in my presentation. I just want to draw your attention to these old and new questions. Thank you very much.